Hello and welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. And I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guide to the phenomenon that was Miami Vice. Sorry, pals. We don't have a regular episode for you this week. Now, we didn't want to leave you high and dry, so we still did a quick recording here, but you can notice that it's a really short episode we're not going to review a new episode from season three we just have some travel come up and so we're going to be on the road it's just not feasible for us to record a regular episode and watch miami vice not saying that we're not still thinking about miami vice i'm sure melissa thinks every day about don johnson's wonderful hair of course <laughs> and more no i'm joking <laughs> <laughs> so instead of not having a an episode let's just do a quick short run through on some of the changes that we've seen already because there's these little changes but a lot of little changes are already starting to stack up in season two but before we get there let's talk a little bit about the man himself dick wolf all right so dick wolf born in new york start as an advertising copywriter for bitten and bulls creating commercials for crest toothpaste and national airlines <laughs> it's the darkest so, crest toothpaste commercials ever made <laughs> <laughs> oh dude it's actually so generic it's like his his famous tagline for crest was was like you won't get cavities if you brush with, uh, brush with crest like, <laughs> matter of fact like, that's a great tip yeah that's awesome yeah so or his national airlines tagline hi i'm cheryl fly with me <laughs> I, who knows i mean why national airlines went out of business God, with advertising like that or why he doesn't do that anymore <laughs> so during that time he was writing screenplays and he actually even collaborated even though very briefly with a then unknown oliver stone i would love to tell you what he collaborated with uh what they collaborated on but I couldn't find it anywhere. So apparently it was never anything actually good. <laughs> he moved to L.A. after that. And after a few years, he got three of his screenplays produced. The most recognizable, or I should say the most successful one being the movie Masquerade. Uh, really? In 1998. I love that movie. Like, yep, that's a really love that movie. Uh, <laughs> really? I've yeah. never heard of it. Rob Lowe. So. It's a Rob Lowe movie. But I mean, right there, right oh, off yeah, the bat, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've got <laughs> a vested interest. <laughs> he would start off his TV career as a staff writer for Hill Street Blues. So that's uh, where that's his Michael start, Mann right there. connection comes in and why yep. Michael Mann would be like, this is the person to take over for me on Miami Vice because I've already worked with him. Yep. He would eventually move over from Hill Street Blues to Miami Vice before he would eventually, after Vice... From 1990 to 2010, he would create Law and Order, which is basically tied with Gunsmoke for the longest running TV drama in history. So, I'll be totally honest. Obviously, I started watching Law and Order, and they were killing characters off. They killed some characters off that were in season one and two, and they started like they started changing. I know that after that. It settles out, but I didn't like that. I didn't in the very beginning. I didn't like that 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 those changes so fast. So I bounced out, and I. I've only seen, I think, two seasons of Law and Order, and I'll never go back to it. You got, you left after they they got rid of Robinette, and you're like, "That's it." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I can't handle this. <laughs> two, there was too many changes from the time that the show started to by the end of season two or three or whatever three, it was. We got the three. There's too many changes. I don't like all these new people. I'm out. And which is funny because the show's most known for mm -hmm. the people that came in after that. I, you know, I watched quite a bit of the original Law and Order, but mostly as reruns. I have always been an SVU fan. So Something about Ice T, the original cop killer, <laughs> uh, playing a cop is just fantastic. And then you add in Richard Belzer's character, and it's just so I, I've seen most of those except for the new, new, the very, the, like the last three or four seasons. Getting back to the Law and Order shows. There are seven different Law & Order shows. <laughs> I just mentioned SVU. There's Criminal Intent, Trial by Jury, Law & Order LA, Law & Order True Crime, Law & Order UK, and then there was an Exiled, a Law & Order movie in 1998. Uh, Exiled being the name of it. Hmm. Yeah, there was even Paris Criminal Investigations from 2007 to 2008 in France. <laughs> also fantastic and i had no idea is that there are five law and order video games <laughs> what 
Yes. How, how do you play a Law and Order video game? At what point do you stop being the cop and you have to be the lawyer? <laughs> Wait, can you be can you be Robinette in any of the games? <laughs> yeah, wait a minute. No. <laughs> Dick Wolf is also the mastermind behind the Chicago franchise, being Chicago Fire, Chicago PD, Chicago Med, and coming soon, Chicago Justice. Well, Chicago Justice Damn, was on. Is on was on last season. Last is on season. for two seasons. No, one season. Just one season. Sorry. They're fighting to keep it, and God damn it. If they're going to pull Carl Weathers off the <laughs> I know. TV, they got hell to pay, God damn it! Yeah, they haven't canceled. They have oh, not why? officially canceled it, but they haven't uh, like said its fate either. Like mm-hmm. they haven't decided either way. But why yeah. isn't it? Why isn't it Law and Order Chicago? No, because it's not Law and Order. They're not Law and Orders. Because mm-hmm. yeah, it doesn't follow the same oh, well. structure. Because there's no, no it police doesn't. part the of it. Chicago is no. There is police. It's like they have their own investigators. It's mm-hmm. like, but yeah. Carl Weathers is a. Goddamn American hero. Yes. You do not is. remove him from TV. <laughs> he says when he's done with TV. He is a gem and he deserves to be on TV no matter what he wants to do. Burger King bathrooms, anything. He can be it. <laughs> a few shows that Dick Wolf is responsible for that you might not know is that he was responsible for the animated show called Fatherhood, which was based on Bill Cosby's book at the same name. Uh, Bill Cosby also got a producer credit for that show Ugh, and it okay. featured uh, featured the voice of Blair Underwood and it ran on Nick at Night and Nickelodeon from 2004 to 2005 so yeah regret that choice it just all choice. feels dirty now mental <laughs> picture of me doing the shruggy like, <laughs> <laughs> he also is responsible for the TNT show Cold Justice which is a procedural drama following a former prosecutor and former crime scene investigator that's been running from 2013 and is still running now. Uh, so basically, they work they they work on unsolved crimes, uh, and they have because of them they have led to 21 arrests, 11 indictments, four confessions, three guilty pleas, and three murder convictions. That's getting shit um, done. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, Dick Wolf. Dude, I I just picture someone in prison, like, freaking Dick Wolf, man. If it wasn't for Dick Wolf, I'd still be free. <laughs> so the, the last show I want to talk about is, did you know that he created a Dragnet reboot that starred Ed O'Neill as Joe Friday? I'm intrigued. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, from 2003 to 2004, for two seasons, he created or rebooted Dragnet. It starred Ed O'Neill as Joe Friday and even featured Eva Longoria for 10 episodes. I, and oh. I am now going to search uh, <laughs> yeah. Netflix for this. Good for Ed um, O'Neill. Yeah. Getting- all the so, best Latina actresses yeah, in Hollywood true, to be yeah. in his TV shows. Good for him. Yes. That's a standing yes. ovation and, for and, Ed O'Neill getting Eva Longoria in one show and then Sofia Vergara in another yeah, exactly. in another show. Yeah. Whew, that man's getting it done. <laughs> well, you can definitely feel Dick Wolf's addition to the show right away. So we we're only two episodes in. We have When Irish Eyes Are Crying and Stone's War. Now as we talked about last week, Melissa, you touched on it. I didn't really get into it. But like, it really does feel like it was one of those episodes when Stone swore where they're just trying to move past the Michael Mann era. They were going to button up some storylines. And that's what happened in the last episode of season two as well. They kind of buttoned up the Caldron story, even though we'll come back. The only person that's left is Orlando. Mm-hmm. But everything else is done. So they kind of are just kind of buttoning up all their all the Michael Mann stories here. It's like they're closing doors on stories so they can move on to the stories that they want to do now. They they want to uh, change the direction of the show. So they mm-hmm. got but they got to close it up. They got to like move past what's already been done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even while they're like closing the doors on some of the Michael Mann storylines, they've jumped right into the rip from the headline style Mm -hmm. like everything is current everything is is what was going on at the time exactly i expected a slow transition to that but no like right out of the gate no holes barred right into the rip from the headlines yeah they definitely didn't have a transition period it was like we're gonna do it this way and then we're gonna start now yeah now i appreciate that uh, that's okay with me i don't really care about the rip from the headlines it's kind of interesting sometimes but i don't care really that much i do appreciate what they've done to tubs that man (laughs) looks sharp 
That is a handsome man. You just all over that man, aren't you? <laughs> Trying to get him to come on the show, huh? Trying to get an interview. Huh? I'm just saying. We recently read an article that was talking <laughs> about that Tubbs, that Philip Michael Thomas is a fantastic actor, and he should be given another chance in Hollywood. That he did such a great job. This is a real article. And I will provide the link to this article. Well, I don't know about a real article. It was written. <laughs> it was written by a, the Cal. Does it also talk about his fantastic music and his range? <laughs> Just said that he was good. The, the writer said he was a good friend of Philip Michael Thomas and that he deserves more work. So, Philip Michael Thomas, we want you to come on Go With The Heat. Please email us, gowiththeheat at gmail.com. <laughs> We know you Please. have kids. We can we, scrounge up like $50. I swear to God. We will scrounge up all the cash we have. We will sell items. Please, Philip Michael Thomas. Please. Come on the podcast. <laughs> I'll buy your album. <laughs> <laughs> the other change that we've seen so far that sounds like it's going to be consistent is the visual imagery and how it fits with the story like these little subtle cues like so like Melissa you mentioned in in episode one of the season where you, Liam Neeson falls and he lands on top of the stop mm -hmm. riding on the road yes right yeah an so IRA yeah you know. yeah and, there, and there's all and there's obviously that in in this episode that we just watched with uh, the, with the Irish stone and it's where they're the government people are making the deal to pick up the tape from him and although they're pretending to be uh, a television studio in the background there's that those bunch of TVs with all the same American flag blowing in the wind yeah there's like this bank of TVs in the background they all have American flags blowing in the wind on them you can just see them in the background but they're they're, they're in the forefront mm -hmm. there so yeah right out of the gate there there isn't this slow transition to the new Dick Wolf era this is a different show it's subtle changes. I've also noticed less of the antics, the silliness that we mm -hmm. would get, you know. I mean, we've talked about it before where it seemed like every time they were going to get serious, there would be a silly scene right before it to try and break it up. This era, they just get right down to it. Stone's War starts with them shooting people and shooting mortars and, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, like killing like, a whole town. And, and it's, yeah, and it, there's no real antics to break any of the monotony up or any of the seriousness up. Throughout the episode, I also feel like Whitech getting more incompetent, <laughs> and the B team is like getting phased out almost. Oh, the foreshadowing! The foreshadowing for episode twelve. I can't do it. My heart can't handle it. I really can't. No. <laughs> so that's going to do it for us this week. Sorry for the really short episode. As I mentioned, we're traveling, so we hope you enjoyed this episode of Go With The Heat, where we get a little bit more detail about Dick Wolf, about the changes that have happened. So we've noticed so far in Season 3, we will be back next week with a regular episode where we move on to Season 3, Episode 3 of Miami Vice. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't Michael Thomas, if you are out there, email us go with the heat at gmail.com it would change our <laughs> lives forever if you would come on the show please any fans out there tweet at philip or email <laughs> philip michael thomas tell him you would love to see him on <laughs> go with the heat podcast and can someone send me a link to the musical sparkle <laughs> that's gonna do it for us this week be sure to check out the website go with the heat.com and we'll see y'all next time Bye. Bye. Bye.